Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting video 30.4 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This video discusses microcatheters, which are small catheters. Micros means small in Greek, and uh, catheter is from catheters in Greek as well. The most common use of microcatheters is in step 8 of the 14 steps of percutaneous coronary intervention, which is advancing a guide wire. However, the microcatheters can be used for other purposes, for example, for injecting contrast or medications, or delivering fat or coils in case of a perforation. This is a classification of microcatheters based on function as well as construction. Microcatheters are divided into five categories. The first one are the big ones or larger outer diameter microcatheters. The second one are the smaller ones or smaller outer diameter microcatheters. The third one are the angulated microcatheters. The fourth is the dual lumen microcatheters. And the fifth one are the plaque modification microcatheters. One way to think of a microcatheter is as an additional telescoping system. For most interventions, we do have a sheath, that's the first telescoping layer, and a guide catheter through which the guide wires and the various devices are advanced. There are two additional telescoping layers that can be added. One of them is the guide extension, which were discussed on video 30.3, and the other one is using a microcatheter for advancing a guide wire. And in that respect, this assembly resembles that of a Matryoshka Russian doll. Many people wonder whether a microcatheter is needed or whether an over-the-wire balloon would be sufficient. And uh, the answer is that an over-the-wire balloon can be used instead of a microcatheter, but that has some disadvantages. For example, the microcatheters are much more flexible. Also, and probably one of the most important points, is that the microcatheter has a marker at the tip. So we know exactly at any given moment where the tip of the microcatheter is located. In contrast, the small balloons, 1.5 are the most commonly used, have the marker in the middle. And therefore, we do not necessarily know exactly where the tip of the balloon is located. Also, the microcatheters are much more resistant to kicking, but the one advantage of over-the-wire balloons is that they cost less than the microcatheters. What are the main uses of a microcatheter? For the larger outer diameter ones, they are most commonly used in undergrade CTO crossing. The smaller ones can be used for wiring through tortuosity or for retrograde crossing, especially through <coughs> epicardial collaterals. Angulated microcatheters can be used for wiring through tortuosity or accessing side branches in bifurcation standing. The dual lumen ones can be used for parallel wiring in CTO PCI, as well as for accessing side branches in bifurcation standing. And finally, the plug modification microcatheters. Their most common use is for balloon and crossable lesions. Wire goes through, but the balloon will not go. Those microcatheters might modify the lesion enough to allow balloons to cross. As we discussed, the number one indication for using a microcatheter is to support the guide wire. It also allows uh, removal and reshaping the tip of the guide wire, and also change of the guide wire to another guide wire without losing the ground that has been gained in wiring. Microcatheters, especially in the retrograde approach, protect the proximal vessel from guide wire induced injuries and also they can be used to inject either contrast or medications and to deliver coils or fat in case of a perforation. Having a microcatheter dramatically alters the penetrating power of a guide wire. Having the guide wire tip extend only a millimeter or two from the tip of the microcatheter significantly increases the penetrating power. And this explains why wiring through a microcatheter is much more often successful in CTO crossing 
than wiring with a guide wire alone. And that is why use of a microcatheter is recommended in all CTO-PCI cases. It's one of the seven global principles of CTO-PCI. Some more specific description of the microcatheters. These are some of the big microcatheters. The classic examples are the Corsair Pro and the Turnpike. There are some newer microcatheters such as the Mamba and the Teleport. Once again, those microcatheters have a larger outer diameter. They have a coil construction and as a result, they can be spun. This is an example of how these microcatheters are constructed. This is the Turnpike microcatheter. And actually, the microcatheters are not a simple piece of plastic, but they're actually a rather sophisticated piece of equipment with a lot of engineering. The Turnpike has uh, three layers. It has a braid and then has two coils that are bidirectional. So what happens is when the microcatheter is rotated and clockwise is the preferred rotation direction for the turnpike, the outer coil tries to contract and the inner coil tries to expand. And in this way, they lock with each other and facilitate transmission of torque from the back end to the front end of the microcatheter. How to advance a microcatheter? One way is by fixing the guide wire and just pushing the microcatheter. Another way, which is feasible with the big microcatheters, is by rotating both uh, the back end as well as the more proximal uh, portion of the microcatheter. This is uh, the second category of microcatheters, the smaller outer diameter. Some of those have similar construction with the big ones such as the Turnpike LP and the Corsair XS. Some others do not have this coil construction, such as the Caravel and the Fine Cross. As a result, the Turnpike LP Corsair XS, they can be rotated, whereas the other ones much less so. This is an example of a patient with highly tortuous coronary arteries. And uh, in this patient, it was possible to wire this extremely tortuous right coronary artery by using a microcatheter, this is an old case, this was a transit microcatheter, together with a Whisper polymer jacketed wire, we, can, we were able to get through this highly tortuous coronary artery. So using a microcatheter significantly improves the ability to wire through areas of tortuosity or other complex lesions. Category number three are the angulated microcatheters. One example is the venture catheter that has a knob at the back end. When the knob is rotated clockwise, that turns the tip of the microcatheter up to a 90 degree angle. Similar mechanism of action for the Swift Ninja microcatheter that has actually 180 arc of motion. And the Supercross is actually a pre-shaped microcatheter. It comes with various angulations. The one we use in our lab is the 120 degree bend. The classic example for using the Venture is for osteal circumflex CTOs. The Venture is a fairly stiff microcatheter and provides very strong support at the same time that stiffness might increase the risk of dissections. This is how this is used. There is clockwise rotation uh, of the knob at the back end that makes the tip to turn up to 90 degrees. The microcatheter, the venture, is advanced past that uh, branch we want to wire through. Then the wire is pulled back. Then the knob is turned, at the, so the microcatheter forms this 90 degree bend. And then the wire is advanced into the side branch. The fourth category of microcatheters are the dual lumen microcatheters. A classic example of their use is for wiring side branches. There are multiple types, the two available in the United States are the twin pass torque and the standard twin pass and also the Sasuke. One potential use is in CTO PCI for parallel wiring. This is an example of a wire in a side branch that stabilizes the microcatheter and that allows crossing attempts through the over the wire lumen of the dual lumen microcatheter. All of the dual lumen microcatheter except one, the recross microcatheter, have a monorail lumen 
and an over-the-wire lumen, but the recross is special in that it has two over-the-wire lumens all the way back. What are the uses of the dual lumen microcatheters? They can be used both in CTO and non-CTO PCI. For non-CTO PCI, a common indication is to insert a second guide wire. Another one is to wire through the side branch of bifurcations and to uh, do the reversed guide wire technique in which uh, the guide wire is looped and then is withdrawn, essentially hooking the side branch. In terms of CTO-PCI, the dual lumen microcatheters can be used for parallel wiring technique, to wire CTOs that have a side branch next to the proximal cap, to use um, uh, in cases where there's a side branch on the distal cap to allow direction of the wire of another wire into the main vessel, to wire septal branches in case of the retrograde approach, and for performing uh, undergrade wiring over an externalized guide wire. This is an example of bifurcation standing. There was a lot of difficulty advancing a guide wire into the jailed side branch. By using a dual lumen microcatheter, it was much easier to advance a wire into this branch. And it's not only the angulation that uh, can be useful, but also the dual lumen microcatheter in this particular case prevents advancement of the guide wire behind the stent struts and in such a way facilitates subsequent wiring of the side branch. And the fifth and final category of microcatheters are the plaque modification microcatheters. There are two available. One of them is the Tornus, comes in 2.1 and 2.6 friends and should be advanced counterclockwise and withdrawn clockwise. And the other one is the Turnpike Cold that is advanced turning clockwise and withdrawn turning counterclockwise. Going on to the various complications of microcatheters. One potential complication is deformation and entrapment with the guide wire. And that is why it is very important if there is resistance in advancing wires through a microcatheter to exchange the microcatheter for a new one. This is a so-called microcatheter fatigue, especially after prolonged wiring attempts and especially if there is a, a a high degree of rotating the microcatheter. This is an example in which the microcatheter and the guide wire literally became fused, requiring removal of both equipment and starting the procedure all over again. This is another example of advancing microcatheter through a heavily calcified lesion with damage of the microcatheter tip. This is a patient with a right coronary artery CTO there were some collaterals, but mainly epicardial. It was decided uh, to attempt undergrade wiring. There was difficulty advancing equipment and the tornus catheter was used. But then uh, the tornus catheter became deformed, it became twisted. And then despite using various techniques such as the parallel wiring, the catheter could not be removed, requiring surgical removal of the entrapped uh, tornus microcatheter. So very important to be cautious in how aggressive the microcatheter is advanced to avoid similar complications. And this is that piece that came out. Also very important every time that there's manipulation of the microcatheter, a guide wire should be inside the microcatheter lumen. And once again, this is the retrieved uh, tornus fragment. Another complication is that of fracturing the tip and that's more common for the carabin microcatheter that have a softer tip. Therefore, those should probably be avoided in heavily calcified and resistant lesions. The microcatheter should not come in contact with another equipment or mic microcatheter or balloon over the same guide wire because interlocking can occur. And also, microcatheters have been used in the past to protect side branches in case of atherectomy. But uh, this is not foolproof. This is an example of a fine cross that was used to protect the side branch. A therectomy was performed, but actually that resulted in damage of the uh, microcatheter. This is actually a perforation of the microcatheter at the site of contact with the atherectomy device. So to summarize, the microcatheters 
are an extremely useful tool, especially for complex percutaneous coronary interventions. Its main use is for facilitating wire, but it can be used for injecting contrast medications, as well as delivering coils and fat in case of perforation. There are five categories of microcatheters, big ones, smaller ones, angulated microcatheters, dual lumen, and plaque modification microcatheters. It is best to have at least one from each category present in the cath lab. Also, one parameter that we did not mention is the length of the microcatheter. For undergrade, usually 135 cm long microcatheters are used, but for retrograde procedures, longer ones, usually 150, with uh, one microcatheter being 155, the microcross, are needed to allow enough length for crossing through collaterals and through the CTO. Very important to be cautious on the manipulation of microcatheters. If there is aggressive torquing, there is a possibility of deforming. Also, there is a possibility of entrapment of the microcatheter with a guide wire. So if there is any friction felt when trying to manipulate wires to the microcatheter, then the microcatheter should be removed and exchanged for a new microcatheter. Thank you.